Joining us now, State Representative David Richardson. He serves on a number of committees in the Florida, Le Florida Legislature, including the Criminal Justice Subcommittee. He's also running for Congress in the re race to replace Congresswoman Ileana ross Leighton. Welcome. Very nice to have you here. Thank you so Thanks much for having me. So one of your big issues that you've been focused on is prison reform. You've talked to inmates, uh, guards, um, people who work in the prison system. What is your overall impression of our state prison system here in Florida? Well, we've, we've got a lot of work that we, we need to do and as you know the the state prisons are segregated from the Department of Juvenile Justice uh, facility so this particular instance we're talking about is a DJJ facility. When you start talking about people who are locked up and a lot of people would say well look these these are bad people they've done something wrong to the point where they they are imprisoned so why should we care about what happens to them once they're on the inside how do you respond to that? Well you, you know um, People sometimes do things that aren't right, um, but everybody is entitled to basic human rights. And uh, once someone's been adjudicated, uh, the state has a responsibility for care and custody. The other thing is most of these people are coming out of prison, and they're going to be living next to you and me. And so we need to be concerned about their rehabil rehabilitation. Now, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, this was a juvenile who had not been adjudicated yet is that correct that's my understanding and my understanding is that a lot of the facilities in the state of florida have been privatized have any of the juvenile justice facilities been privatized and does it make a difference as far as the treatment of the inmates in there or the detainees so so currently all of the residential facilities uh, that are run by DJJ or for DJJ are all privatized 100 percent so this particular facility was the Miami-Dade Detention Center that is run by state employees okay. uh, but you do see differences and and primarily uh, I believe the the pay and so the level of uh, of quality of, of employee that you might get might be affected by that so for example uh, state employees that work for DJJ are paid less than correctional officers uh, at the uh, at, for the adult prisons and and they're underpaid you know we worked hard to get them a pay increase just this past year though we got a pay increase for the uh, Department of Juvenile Justice officers who are, were making about twenty five thousand dollars a year but if you go to the private facilities uh, they're making uh, it's been reported around twenty two thousand dollars a year so when you see a case like this what does it tell you about our prison system especially now with the juveniles well, the, the truth is that the legislature is not adequately funding uh, DJJ or the state prison system. You know, uh, we're adjudicating people, we're passing laws and saying that if you break this law, you have to go to prison or you need to be detained by DJJ, but we're not adequately funding those departments. And so care and custody becomes questionable. So you've talked about the pay for the workers. What about just the general conditions and how they're treated? So I will just tell you the physical physical plant conditions are, are not good. Uh, I was was in this particular facility a few months back after the Fight Club uh, report. Uh, you know, the, the law previously did not allow us to make unannounced visits, but the secretary said she would not uh, deny us entrance. Uh, I, I was shocked at the living conditions inside this facility. It was worse than what I saw at our adult uh, prisons, quite frankly. And, uh, and I reported that to the secretary, and she immediately um, got on this. But, but, you know, when the economy took a downturn in 2008, a lot of things got cut. And programming got cut in in these facilities. Uh, maintenance and repairs got cut, and you know the the facilities are crumbling, quite frankly. What do they look like? What are those conditions? Well, for for, for example, in this particular facility, uh, there was one housing unit that we went into, and there were ten showers. Only three shower heads were working. The other seven were broken, hadn't been repaired. There were only two toilets, and water was coming out from under both of the toilets from the, behind the wall. And so the, all, the floor all around the toilets were, were wet, so the kids would have to walk through that to, to use the toilet. And just conditions that we would find unacceptable. And quite frankly, if, if you had those conditions in a private home, I bet the Department of Children and Families would, would determine that you're an unfit parent and would take you out of your own home. Real quickly before we go, is money the answer or are there other reforms that can be put in place that might not be so expensive and that might get uh, the kind of, uh, of, of support in Tallahassee that's needed? So I think it's two things. Money is, is obviously needed and this past year we did not adequately fund either of those departments. But there has to be a change in culture and that's the, the biggest problem that I have seen with both uh, the Department of Corrections and DJJ is there's been a long history of bad 
bad culture and believing that you could do anything that you wanted to do to an inmate or a detained juvenile. Mm -hmm. And that's just, that's not good for our state in the long run because as I said, these kids or these adults, they're coming back to our communities. State Representative David Richardson, thank you very much for joining us. Thanks My for coming pleasure. in. Thank thank you. You.